One of the things we've learned in the past two years is the importance of mental health and emotional well-being. The generation that is now retired, the great generation or the baby boomers, are often not used to or comfortable talking about mental health. But as we are living longer than ever before, more attention is focused on wellness, resilience, and emotional health. Join us today to learn more. Hello and welcome to Aging Insights. I'm Dr. Kathy Rowe, Executive Director of New Jersey Advocates for Aging Well. Today I'd like to welcome Dr. Michelle Zechner, Assistant Professor at the Rutgers School of Health Professions, Department of Psychiatric Rehabilitation and Counseling Professions. Dr. Zechner has an extensive career in psychiatric rehabilitation, research, professional training, and more. Her primary expertise is in helping people living with lifelong mental health conditions focus on health and wellness and in wellness for emotional health as we age. Dr. Zechner, we're very happy to have you with us here today. And I want to start by asking you to, can you describe or define what do we mean by mental health and emotional well-being? Kathy, it's great to be here. And I, I think that's a really important question that we start with. Um, mental health, it, it has kind of a funny connotation in different ways, but what it really just means is our emotions, mm -hmm. our uh, psychological health, our social well-being. It's all of that constellation of, of sort of the thoughts in our heads and our feelings and how we act. All of that together is, is our mental health. Okay. So it's a much larger picture than what some people would think. Mm -hmm. So your work focuses on wellness and flourishing with age. And for some people that may come naturally, and for others they need to be more intentional about that and need a little more work on that. So what are the tools that people can use to flourish as they age? That's a really great question. I've been, I've been um, thinking about that for the last five years or so. Um, and thinking about people age differently and people mm -hmm. age, some people have um, health conditions, some people have are experiencing some emotional issues. Mm -hmm. um, and I really believe that people can flourish and live well and age well, even despite having those uh, other kinds of things that are going on for them. There are things that everyone can do mm -hmm. uh, to flourish as they age. And I think that the research is pretty clear. The number one thing we can do, and I you know, was just mentioning this to you, is, is go for a walk. Um, move. And mm -hmm. I understand that, you know, for many of us, we may have ankle problems or hip problems and mm -hmm. may not be able to move in the way we used to. Uh, but it's very, very important to stand up if, if one is able uh, and, and move around, you know, chair dancing, chair yoga, tai mm -hmm. chi, walking, um, whatever one can do to keep active. It's really, really important uh, because it's not only important for our heart and our circulatory system, it's actually really important for our brain and our emotional well-being. Uh, another action that I think is really important is to stay engaged in life. Mm -hmm. Really care about, ask questions, notice right. things. Um, I, I see some older adults, you know, when I was doing clinical work, I would see some people just sort of give up and they didn't really right. want to leave their house anymore. Right. Um, and yet that is really not good for our brains. It's really not good for our emotions. And that's not what people are, we're sort of built to do. People, we're built to sort of connect with other people. Mm -hmm. And when we deny ourselves that, it's really not great news for our brains. Mm -hmm. So reaching out uh, to people that we know, whether it's even the mail carrier or someone at the grocery store. My, my husband always gives me a hard time because whenever I go to the grocery store, I'm talking to the checkout person. <laughs> How's your day going? How's it going? How are you feeling? Okay. And he's always like, why do you have to do that? And I'm like, well, but those little interactions throughout the day right. can mean a lot. To, and right. it helps me and it helps the person that I in, inter interact with. So I think that it's important for, for older adults, for for anyone as we as we go through life to connect with other people that really helps our brains um, also being curious just okay. wondering I mean I know isn't that crazy <laughs> really being curious that's a helpful thing it is actually really helpful to be curious um, to want to learn new information and you'll see a lot of things you know in AARP or other types of things right right that, that encourage people to do word puzzles or read books or watch TV programs that are you know outside of their understanding mm -hmm. or take remote trips. I, I did something um, for uh, a couple of years ago on brain health and we talked about the value of taking a virtual trip. 
A virtual trip. A virtual trip. You, from your seat, could go to anywhere in the world. And I'll give you an example. My husband and I, we, we do this a lot. I We love to, like, say we'll get Indian food. Okay. Um, and then we'll listen to, to Bollywood music on the radio. And then we might look up some different areas in India where mm -hmm. the food that we're eating is from. Now, all those things, it sounds, you know, sort of lighthearted and fun. And it is. Mm -hmm. But it actually really promotes um, mental well-being because an emotional well-being because you're sort of being curious and you're opening yourself up to something outside right. of yourself. Well, it sounds like a mini vacation. It is. <laughs> a free, well, okay, only the cost of dinner, I guess. <laughs> but, and, and then lastly, I do want to add that um, maintaining sort of a connection to your sense of values and your meaning and purpose and making sure that you're doing things that are important to mm -hmm. you with people who matter to you and whatever that means for right. you or me. Um, so it sounds like what you're really saying is that the, the mind is a muscle, just like the rest of the body. It needs to be worked out. The mind needs to be worked out, absolutely. And then for the body, you know, I, I, I sort of joke, I've got a 97-year-old grandmother, and I said, and she has dementia, and I said, Grandma, why do you think you've lived so long? And she told me the other day, she said, well, because I eat right, and I, I don't like to sit still, and, okay. and that's certainly true. And and that's probably common sense knowledge that we all know mm -hmm. about uh, aging and how to stay emotionally well. Um, but it, it, it's really true that, that movement and eating right and staying curious and being connected with uh, the life around you is really, really important. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about your, um, your diagram for wellness for emotional health and what that entails. Absolutely. I am so excited. I, I have been thinking about multidimensional wellness for about 15 or 20 years. And oh, okay. the, the model that I've uh, worked with and, and we've created with my team is really built off of uh, Dr. Peggy Swarbrick, one of my mentors, and her model of wellness uh, for emotional well-being was adopted by SAMHSA, uh, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health okay. and Services Administration. Okay. And her focus really was on people who'd lived with uh, mental health conditions all their life. And and I was really interested, how do we bring that into aging? Mm -hmm. um, so we basically think about wellness as more than an absence of illness. Now that doesn't Correct, make a right, lot of sense, right? right? But uh, my challenge always is, you know, right now when you say wellness and you think about your doctor, you're really, you know, your doctor's like wellness visit and what they're really meaning is your prevention Visit, exactly, right? right? Which is absolutely important, very critical for your physical well-being, but what in, in terms of our emotional well-being, we need so many things, as we were just discussing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and some of the areas that aren't often talked about are things like developmental wellness. Um, okay. And that is, uh, how do you feel about getting older? How are you capitalizing on the, on the knowledge and the experience that you have as a person who is aging mm -hmm. um, and seeing it as not necessarily a negative thing right. to become more you know, uh, sort of worldly and have a bigger perspective right, as right. we get older, right? right? I look at it as my background is public health and I look at aging as a success story. If, you know, yes. it's, it's the uh, accumulation of multiple of a lifelong of wins and success and the ability to overcome and move forward. Um, but you're right, a lot of people look at it, uh, it can be stressful, it can be scary. And we've also talked before um, that people learn how to age. Ah, so yeah. we might not have examples of people who are older than us or people who did age well because in the last 30, 40 years, our, our life expectancy has increased so much. So I understand what you're saying, how it can be, it can be challenging and it can, be, it can be a stressful situation for people. Yeah, and I think we have, I mean, I'm just gonna throw it out there as, as, you know, in my background as a social worker also at one point is I think that a lot of ageist messages get out there. And so we don't know that developmental, right. Right, we don't know that aging could be a good experience. We don't know that we could be healthy as mm -hmm. we age. Um, those aren't messages that we always hear from the media, right. from social media in particular. Right. From bir the birthday card aisle. Yes. Um, you know, it, it starts early, even at 40 now, the, the jokes and stuff. But there mm. is, um, yeah, they're right. There's a lot of ageism. And there's a lot of work being done to, to change that mm -hmm. and to change the way we look at it without also having the superstar aging, like the 90-year-old who runs the marathon. Right. I haven't run a marathon yet. I don't think I'm going to start. Right. But, um, you know, we have to get away from this image of, enfeebled or frail mm -hmm. or the you know the superhero 
because most of us are in between. Right, and and that's I think what what wellness really brings for me is is this idea of balance. So okay. really being interested and connected and balanced in all the different areas of yourself. And we'll, we could talk about the model that. Um, uh, I developed with my team, and, but that includes your emotional well, mm -hmm. wellness, your physical wellness, your occupational, or sort of how you structure your day type of thing. Okay. Um, social wellness, financial wellness. Um, so all of these pieces are kind of working together. Mm -hmm. And and the notion is that with wellness, we are making steps to be as well as we can each day. Mm -hmm. And that might mean, you know, I today I brought an apple instead of chocolate cake. Yay me. You know, that's, you know, some good physical mm -hmm. wellness for me. But it also means that, you know, as a younger person, I tend to overwork. And so my occupational wellness is a little bit shaky and that impacts okay. my social wellness and all those things are sort of connected and mm -hmm. then my emotional well-being tanks because all I'm doing is working. Okay. Um, so for someone who might be retired, the same thing might be true. If someone gets too caught up in their physical wellness, but they're not really taking care or paying attention to their social wellness or their spiritual wellness, mm -hmm. all of these things are together. And so I think that regardless of who you are and any uh, disabilities or abilities you might have, you can think about yourself as sort of this complex being with all these different yeah. pieces. And how do we keep those pieces rolling along? Yeah. Um, and I think it's by making sure we pay a little bit of attention to different areas of our life and don't get over too focused in on one yeah. area. So I'm sure that a large section of our audience is now going, that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> Isn't there a shot or a <laughs> pill that I could have for this? But it is a lot of work, and it's not. Um, it's, it sounds like multiple areas of your life working together and overlapping. So, can we go through the elements of the um, of emotional well-being and get into a little more detail? Absolutely. Let's talk about that. So, so the model that um, we came up with is really based on two different, as I mentioned, uh, Peggy Swarbrick and also um, my colleague, uh, Dr. Matt Fullen from mm -hmm. um, uh, Virginia Tech. And we looked at those models for different populations and we said, how can we merge them together? So we came up with a new uh, variation, and that's developmental wellness, which we just talked about, mm -hmm. which is sort of feeling okay about aging and yeah. seeing it as something that is normal and and actually to be welcomed, yeah. right? Um, there's also cognitive wellness, which is really an important topic for many of us as mm -hmm. we get older, and that means things like brain health, taking care of our brain, um, being curious, uh, being mm -hmm. uh, open to learning, but also protecting our ourselves uh, from any uh, things that might cause brain problems. For example, okay. too much drinking. Mm -hmm. um, or taking, you know, substances um, mm -hmm. that can really influence your brain in a negative way and uh, impact your decision making and thinking right. and things like that. Right. So thinking about your brain health, um, also physical health, which I think everybody probably knows all about, uh, physical well-being, right. what we do for that, um, you know, diet, nutrition, preventative health, um, and sleep, of course, is really mm -hmm. important. Well, there's been more and more talk about sleep and the importance of sleep. Mm -hmm. And I think we're only just scratching the surface on that and how important it is for us to, to reset our bodies and reset our mind with sleep. Um, and even people having sleep studies to find out they might think they're, they're sleeping, but it's not the quality sleep they need to be well. Absolutely, and and also I think I you know I've seen some people who are, are have so much energy and they push themselves, they push okay. themselves, and and then they don't necessarily give themselves the rest. Mm -hmm. um, sleep is a tricky issue, and it's always something you should talk to your doctor about. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes just resting, like giving yourself permission to sit in your chair, put your feet up for half an hour in the afternoon. If you need to do that, uh -huh. then you'll have more energy, more uh, get up and go in the evening if you're going to spend some time with other people, visiting okay. your grandchildren. So giving yourself permission to take that rest if you need it, mm -hmm. as well as getting the sleep that you need. Okay. Um, another, we've been talking about emotional uh, well-being, and mm -hmm. that's sort of being able to cope with life's difficulties, being able to regulate our emotions, being able to express our emotions uh, when we want to. Um, and that can also be impacted by aging, which will, you know, as a result of a lot of different transitions that can yeah. happen mm -hmm. as we get older. 
um, and social wellness. And, and that's one of my favorites, the connections and relationships, as I was just sort of mentioning, that it's really important that we connect with other people, mm -hmm. that we uh, make time. And, and the number of connections isn't that important. It's the quality mm -hmm. of uh, the, the connections that we have, that we have someone who will listen to us, help us problem solve, uh, who's there when we need them. And mm -hmm. it, you know, you really only need two or three people who fit into that category. Right. But you might be like, you know, my mother has has 25 best friends and that's great you know mm -hmm. um, so it's it really everyone is different for mm -hmm. their needs but making sure that you have at least one person that you can talk to and will help you and I think that gets that's challenging for older people as as you lose friends and relatives mm -hmm. as people move away so yeah. the the neighbor that maybe you you saw every morning for a little bit on the sidewalk might move away and that connections lost or you know friends who have passed away so um, it sounds like building new social connections, like always making new friends yeah. is important. Yeah, yeah, or, or being open to the idea of new friends okay. and at least making uh, an effort to connect to other people mm -hmm. as much as possible because it really does make a difference. It really makes uh, a difference in terms of our emotional well-being and our, our cognitive skills and our ability to speak and, mm -hmm. and be understood. It's, it's, it's really important. Okay, that's fascinating that it's so interconnected. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's actually been some, you know, as an aside, some research done on social isolation and, and the changes of the brain that occur. So it can't be uh, underemphasized, right. really, to, to make friends and connect and have conversations yeah. with people. And we were talking, even before COVID, um, in the healthy aging world, we were talking about social isolation mm -hmm. and how to help with that. But then COVID... Yeah really sped that up. And I think we're starting to see the long-term impact of yes, all that isolation, absolutely. physically, mentally. Um, there was recently a report that COVID, uh, whether it's the disease itself or the effects of COVID and what it's done had on our society, there's an increased um, rate of Alzheimer's mm -hmm. recently. Yeah. So somehow that was connected with disease or not with the isolation that came with it. Absolutely. Um, so I think that was the proof, everything we saw under COVID is the proof of how important these social connections are. It really, it, it really can't be, uh, it, it, you have to connect with people. Um, also this idea of occupational wellness, which is a little bit hard yeah. to understand, like what the <laughs> heck? Um, but Peggy was an, or is an occupational thera uh, therapist, which makes sense, you know, those folks okay. are really, but the way I think about occupational wellness is really, how do we structure our day? Okay. So as a retired person, um, I'm imagining, because I'm not retired, but you know, as a working person, I usually have a schedule, a calendar, right, right? right? I know I get up, I have breakfast, then if I'm, you know, if it's Saturday, I might, you know, do the dishes and clean mm -hmm. the kitchen, and then I might go to the farmer's market. So having a set routine and a schedule for what one does mm -hmm. is really actually quite important especially for people who are retired, okay. to have that structure of mm -hmm. what they're going to do next and have a sense of activities that are meaningful for them okay. so that it's not just, oh, okay, I'm going to, you know, just waste some time watching The Price is Right, you know. Maybe it's like, I love The Price is Right because I've been watching it for 35 years right, right. and I love to, you know, call my friend, you know, Susan and say, Susan, did you get it yet? You know, and maybe that's part of your routine. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really important to have meaningful activities every day that you sort of are structuring your day with. Okay. And it's interesting because occupational, we thought all related work, to work, but it's, it's the, your daily business, whatever that is. Exactly. And it might be work for, for many older adults might work. Many older mm -hmm. adults might volunteer or right. do other things. Um, they may be involved with their faith communities mm -hmm. and, and are a part of like phone call chains mm -hmm. to others or, or, you know, whatever it is that's purposeful and meaningful. Uh, that's really important because that purpose and meaning, again, that's kind of why we exist and why right, we want to be right. alive is because we have purpose and meaning in our life. Right. It gives us a reason to get up and going. Yeah, it organizes exactly. our day. It gives us something to look forward mm -hmm, to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then spiritual uh, wellness. A lot of you'll notice a lot of these wellness uh, ideas overlap. So mm -hmm. you can't sort of say this is this and there's the next bucket. I noticed, next, right? right? right. They're very blurry. But the idea is that they're kind of different ideas and concepts mm -hmm. that have very similar things that you can do to support them. So now talking about spiritual uh, wellness, many people think about 
faith and religion, mm -hmm. and that's certainly true for some people. For other people, this is about purpose and meaning. Going back to occupational wellness, okay. like why do you get up every day? What are your values? Uh, how are you connected to something bigger than yourself? Right. Whatever that looks like for the person. Right. And it may mean that they want to be more involved. Uh, an older person might want to be more involved in their church or their faith community. It may mean they want to commit to spending some time outside and watching the birds mm -hmm. at the bird feeder. It okay. really, it's it's a broad, open It doesn't have to be traditional congregation. It, it um, doesn't. It can be. And for many people, it is. But for some people, that's not how they identify their spiritual right. wellness. Okay. Uh, and then environmental wellness, which always uh, is sort of an interesting one for me, uh, thinking about what, it, what are your surroundings? Okay. You know, thinking about how does it support your health and well-being in general? Um, for a while, I was doing some work at Hagedorn uh, Psychiatric Hospital, which was a state psychiatric hospital for older adults. Oh. Um, and I would run groups there, and we talked about environmental wellness, and everybody was like, I'm in the hospital, this is horrible. And then in one of the, one of the, uh, rooms, we looked out and you could see the sunset, you could see deer, oh. you could see the mountains. It was really gorgeous. So it might be plants, it might be posters, it might be um, it, decorative objects around you. Okay. It could just be making sure that you make some time to get outside. Also, a lot of research around the uh, benefit of nature right. for your emotional well-being. Right. So, uh, yes, environmental wellness is something that we sometimes overlook, but I think some people are more interested in that than others. Okay. But it's important to think about, um, you know, if, if you live in a place and you don't have anything on the walls, but maybe, you know, like a picture yeah. might be helpful. Okay, to, to so make, surround yourself with surround things that make you feel good. Surround yourself with beauty and, yeah. Surround yourself with beauty, I like that. Yeah, yeah. And the last uh, but not least uh, is financial wellness, and that's mm. really what do we need to maintain our needs and preferences right. and the resources. And I know that that is also a challenge mm -hmm. um, as we get older as well with fixed incomes. And, and that's sort of getting the help that we need, at, you know, to manage our finances mm -hmm. and or uh, some advice to manage our our okay. finances as needed. Okay. So unfortunately for, for a lot of people, Social Security is not enough for them to retire on. Right. And especially for women who are retired now, they either didn't get paid for work outside the home or they weren't paid as much as their male counterparts. So their pension is not the same as men. And it is important, well, one, to plan early, but to have a really good sense of what your financial well-being is so that you can, you can make plans, you can live well going forward. Absolutely. Yeah. So all of these all of these areas about wellness, you can sort of see they they overlap, they right. intertwine. But the idea is if, if you know, and then I've I've known people who focus so much on their financial wellness to the expense of everything else that they couldn't see mm -hmm. the relationships, they couldn't see their okay. social wellness, and that really impacted their emotional wellness. So these these eight areas really do all blend together. They, they do affect each other. Absolutely. But I like to think about it as a circle. Mm -hmm. And if one area of your circle is, is not doing so great, what happens? You get a flat tire, right? And then okay. you're not <laughs> rolling along very well. Uh, so it's, it's helpful. And, and as you said, it, it can be work, but I also really enjoy thinking about it. And most people I know that I've worked you know, with, older adults, younger adults, everyone in between, they like thinking about wellness mm -hmm. in this way because it's much more uh, broad and, and comprehensive right. as opposed to I am just my ankle that isn't doing great. True, right. You know? you're, not, you're not the problem part. And then I think that people can easily, when we medicalize aging, we can make it about all the problems and the doctor's visits and the pills or the body parts that hurt and not about the wellness, which is yeah. it's just putting a, a difference, uh, approaching it differently from a positive. Mm -hmm. Um, angle of what I can do instead of what's wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. As we age, you know, dementia is, is a challenge for many people. And how does dementia overlap with mental health? Well, how are they similar? How are they different? And where do they intersect? As we age, dementia is not inevitable. Dementia is not something that automatically occurs, right, right as we age. Right. Um, it is a disease process that's mm -hmm. related. It's a symptom of other diseases like Alzheimer's disease mm -hmm. and vascular dementia and other conditions. So we know that to be true. And yet, 
when people start having thinking problems is which cause you know what de dementia sort of causes thinking problems mm -hmm. focusing it can also cause you know memory problems and what happens at the very beginning uh, it's very distressing it's very mm -hmm. distressing for for most people um, and what happens um, I a long time ago, when I started my career, I worked uh, on a dementia unit uh, okay. in a nursing home. Oh, okay. And it was really interesting, you know, two different levels. But there's a phase that people are very aware of what's going on and what they're losing. And that is really hard. And what happens sometimes is that people develop depression oh. or a lot of sadness mm -hmm. or anxiety about what's to come. And in that case, it's so important that people talk to their doctors. Mm -hmm. Talk to your doctor. if. Someone, if you have someone you know, or if you're experiencing some memory loss, talk to your doctor because there are medications that can be very helpful okay. to address some of those early symptoms of dementia. Um, and sometimes it's related to the dementia. As the dementia progresses, it's often uh, very common that depression or depressive symptoms uh, come up as well. As we age, what are the, the mental health challenges that come with that, the, the clinical mental health challenges that come along with it? You know, it's, it's so interesting because just as dementia is not part of normal aging, as mm -hmm. we like to say, right, uh, depression, anxiety, mental health challenges or emotional problems, they're not a normal part of aging. What is a normal part of aging are transitions. Mm -hmm. And what, I, what do I mean by that? I mean things like, um, you know, people have to move often right. to go to different types of housing. Right. Uh, they may lose friends or family mm -hmm. um, and they may have grief over, or they may have new health problems that cause problems that they didn't have before. Okay. All of these things put us at risk for depression. So the number one mental health um, or emotional problem that can come up with aging is depression. Okay. Um, and that's when someone feels very sad, crying, um, and has a hard time sort of uh, snapping out of it. You can't snap out of depression. It's a, it's a chemical change. Um, but also anxiety is, is something that comes up, particularly mm -hmm. with health problems okay. um, that arise. If you think of COPD or emphysema or breathing problems, people can be very anxious. And that makes sense. If you've mm -hmm. ever had a cold or the flu and tra mm -hmm. trouble or asthma, tra trouble getting one's breath, then, uh, you know, anxiety is, is right. very real. I would encourage anyone who feels that they've been not themselves, irritable, mm -hmm. crying, more nervous or stressed than they feel that they've ever been in their life, mm -hmm. that they reach out and, okay. and find some, some support from um, a therapist or a mental health counselor. Okay. Because I always, you know, we always say in, in mental health that a uh, field that depression is the most treatable uh, emotional problem that you can have. Okay. Well, that's good to know. So. Depression and anxiety, they're not, they don't automatically come with aging. No. But if they do, if someone does experience it, then it's time to reach out to your doctor, to a therapist, to, to find help and the treatment that you need. Absolutely, absolutely. There are a lot of different ways that people can get help. So before we go, what are some of the resources that people can use to find more information and, and support that they need? That's a really, really important question, Kathy. And I just want to highlight the first thing, if you or someone you know is in imminent crisis, if you're mm -hmm. experiencing a mental health crisis and you, it's very clear you need help, there's a new hotline uh, and that's 988. Right. right. And that is a really, it's like 911 for your health, or physical health crisis, but 988 for your emotional health mm -hmm. crisis. So I would encourage people to write that number down okay. if you have someone in your life that is prone to, to challenges, um, or if you yourself need any kind of help, it's very effective. Okay. Um, if you're not in an emergency situation or a crisis, then I would encourage people to call the National Alliance on Mental Illness of New Jersey, NAMI New Jersey. They have great referrals. Um, those information will be in the packet okay. uh, that I provide. Also, the Mental Health Association of New Jersey has a lot of referral information. Mm -hmm. The United Way has a wonderful number in New Jersey, two one one and oh, okay. that number will help uh, connect you to people in your county who can help you with mental health um, 
resources, but also housing or financial or okay. any other kinds of help one might need. Okay. 211 is a great uh, way to go. And of course, I'm from Rutgers, and I would be <laughs> remiss if I didn't mention uh, Rutgers University Behavioral Health Care, which mm -hmm. offers uh, all types of emotional support and services. And lastly, I do want to mention um, the Rutgers uh, Comprehensive Services on Aging, mm -hmm. who have done uh, amazing work in um, helping caregivers and people who have uh, been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And I just a shout out to the Care to Caregivers program. We didn't mm -hmm. talk at all about caregivers in this segment, which was a little bit uh, too bad on my, I'm sorry, I didn't bring it up sooner. Um, but definitely caregivers need a lot of support mm -hmm. uh, as well. And the Care to Caregivers program is, is amazing. It's a hotline run by peers who are also caregivers who've been okay. specially trained. Okay. And we will be doing more caregivers in the next couple of oh, months. Great. So we will make sure we'll have you back <laughs> for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. So thank you for watching this episode of Aging Insights TV, also available as a podcast. Aging Insights is brought to you with the support of the Wallerstein Foundation for Geriatric Life Improvement, our funders, supporters, and viewers like you. I want to thank our partners here at PCTV for helping us bring your guests to you today. You can dial the state hotline at 877-222-3737. You can also find a wide range of resources for older adults and their caregivers on our website at njaaw.org.